Hey, what's up, everybody? This is DJ Thielen, CEO of Fortune Foreclosures, founder of Flipping On Demand, and your host for DJ's Dugout, where every single week we bring you somebody to inspire, motivate you, and teach you things that you can apply to your life to be better in life and better in business. Today, I have a good friend of mine on the show, uh, Mr. Oleg Jones. What's up, Oleg? Hey, DJ, how are you? <laughs> Doing great, buddy. Doing great. Hey, um, so we know that uh, we might have a little bit of noise uh, being the being the entrepreneur. I know it, how it is like mo moving around, and so if uh, if we if we do, you guys just hang with us. So, um, anyways, uh, hey, Oleg, see if you can move your. Oh, I can see. Okay, you're good. Okay. Um, so, so hey, share with everybody uh, just a quick snapshot so people can have an idea. Um, who you are, uh, where you came from, and that kind of thing. Because we're going to get into, you know, today is probably, as you and I talked, you know, last night, today is probably my favorite subject of all the uh, the shows and, and podcasts I've done because it, it really hits home with something that changed my life. And that is manifestation, energy, vibration, which um, you have some great uh, insight oh, on. Oh, yeah, today. crazy stories. <laughs> yeah. So share with the people real quick just – who you are, where you came from, and how you got here to California. Yeah, it's yeah, quite it's quite, quite a quite journey. journey. So, so uh, I was I born was in born Moscow, Moscow, in Russia. Russia. Uh, but I grew up between Canary <laughs> Islands, Spain. There's a seven islands next to Morocco, but they belong to Spain. They're like two hours flying from Madrid to Canary. They're quite known destination in Europe for like it's like the Hawaii for Americans, right? So I grew up in the Canary Islands between that and Ukraine. But I never felt like I belonged there because I'm not a traditional guy. I'm more like entrepreneur, revolutionary. And my family, they just, don't, I don't come from like a educated or wealthy family. I mean, none of my family went to college, right? And and I, the more I was hanging out there, but I would see like successful people. And I was like, I don't know how, where to start, how to do it. I'm on the freaking Canary Islands. I was like 17, going suicidal, you know, already because I started partying like crazy. <laughs> working in clubs at 16 so it was a lot of fun but then like oh, you start meeting interesting people who come to vacation and they share with you you know like i'm doing this i'm doing that and you're like shit i'm not doing anything with my life you know and then you look around and everybody yeah everybody was like all your buddies and friends and their family they're born in that island they will die in that island they're not gonna achieve anything and you realize you're wasting your time everybody's just getting cranky because they're not achieving anything and like school system sucks they don't teach you anything interesting and like but then you don't have any connections you don't have any friends outside and so like you start getting frustrated because you wanted to get out of there and you don't know where to start that's the biggest uh, obstacle people just say i just don't know how like i don't know how like it's there's a funny thing uh, we assume that because we don't know how we assume it's difficult because we don't know how perfect example when i came to america uh, I'll get back to how I got here, but uh, a buddy of mine, he said, hey, do you mind pumping gas in the car? I, I never pumped gas. I never had a car. I never had driver's license, nothing. And I said, no, nah, you know what? Why don't you do it? He's like, no, nah, I could use your help. Would you pump some gas? He's like, you know, it might sound stupid, but it's just I just don't know how. And it's like the easiest thing in the world to pump some gas. But because I didn't know how, I assume well, it's going to be difficult. No, I'll do it later. Or you do it. Or you yeah. just want to like leave it there because you assume it's different no so anyways as i was like going like crazy i just in the canary islands i said you know what uh like you start asking questions you start questioning yourself like how the how the hell am i gonna do it and be honest with yourself always like ask the question you know like i don't know how but i'm open to it there's gotta be a way so weirdly enough i met first american in my life and the canary no americans go there i made a first american i knew him for one week I barely spoke English. I knew like 10 words in English. So we start hanging out and partying. And he says like, hey, Oleg, you know, you're a cool guy. You, you will do great in L.A. And I said, what is L.A.? What do you mean? He says, uh, L.A. means Los Angeles. You know, I was like, oh, America. He's like, yeah, America. <laughs> so like I literally grew up under a rock. I didn't speak English, even though France. And I, I wasn't traveled. Like I was like a very close like, you know, have you seen the Yes Man, the movie Yes Man? I was the no man. I was like, no, I'm okay. Like, people are like, oh, let's go party on the other side of the island. No, I'm okay. You guys go. I'm okay. You know, I was one of those guys. 
anyway, so then I said, wow, America sounds good. Like, none of my family ever been to America. I, you know, I know nothing about it. I thought California, Los Angeles, and Hollywood, it's three states away from each other. Like, that's my idea. Like, they're talking about, like, grow up in ignorance, right? Like, and, uh, yeah. And then I said, you know what? Sure, that'll be great. We're drinking at the bar. He says, yeah. Would you go? I said, yeah, I would go, you know. I thought he was bullshitting, right? It's like everybody like partying. They can tell you whatever. The next day he comes to the bar where I was working. He says, hey, buddy, you know, I got you one-way ticket. You should go. I was like, no shit. Like, I know this guy for like less than a week. I was like, I thought you were kidding. I was like, no, you said you would go. Check it out. I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. And, you know, I just quit my job, $200 in my pocket. He bought me the ticket. I didn't speak English. I didn't tell anybody of my family, not my mom, not anybody. Like, my mom would talk me out of it. Like, because yeah. afraid of the unknown, you know, like, oh, <laughs> the, everything I've tried, like the day I get an Oscar, I'm not thanking my mom. I say, I love you, but you're not getting get the credit for it, you know, because like there's some, you know, and, and it's unfortunate. They've been brought up of like being afraid, like in the communism environment, like don't go out, you know, you're going to get hit over the head. They'll steal everything you've got, you know, and here's a guy 19 going to a country nobody ever like out of the family ever been there 200, 200 bucks in the pocket i was just ready to get the hell out of there you know when when you so desperately need a change you just go you just like i i don't know like whatever is there for me but whatever i've got here ain't working for me i'm just packing up and going so i got here and then i called my mom and i said hey i'm in america <laughs> She says, son, what are you bullshitting? Why are you calling? You know, like nobody believed me. I moved because I was the shy guy in the family. So when I made the move, they're like, wow, this guy made the move? No fucking way. You know, so yeah, I was like, yeah. So then, you know, he's, and I said, you know, where I'm going to live? He's like, oh, you can crash on the couch. I have another friend I'm helping from Ohio. That guy, the third roommate, He's engaged to Paris Hilton now. His name is Chris Zilka. So that was my very first roommate, my buddy Nate from Texas and Chris Zilka. This is here in Los Angeles. <laughs> this is like a oh, small, small world. And now like all this. Uh, oh, it's funny. I know him. That guy is a, it's a crazy dude. Anyways. Um, so then I started partying. Uh, I didn't know anything. I did, never thought of. I never finished high school, so I never thought of achieving anything, never thought of getting driver's license. Like, I thought so little of myself because of the environment you brought up with. You know, you, you there's no mentors around, nobody. Like, I grew up without a father. I haven't seen him since I was four. So there's no father figure, nobody to, like, you know, it's everybody around you just wasting their time partying. And at some point, this shit gets old. So what I did in the life, literally for a year, I did nothing. I party and I went to events and partying up in the hills. And it's all fun, but then you start meeting people like, what do you do? I'm an actor, I'm a professional actor. This guy's making 10,000 an episode, you know, like not a big star, but still he's working. This guy's a writer, this guy's a real estate guy, this guy, and you're like, I'm Mr. Nobody. You know what I mean? Like all, you're meeting all these people, and it's like, wow, it's so nice to have something solid. And like, how long can you go around being a wannabe trying to hang out to Johnny Depp? Oh, hey, I'm with Johnny Depp. Oh, hey, I'm with this. Yeah, but he's Johnny Depp. Who are you? You know what I mean? Like, it's so much better to party when you achieve something and you have something solid and you meet people. Like, you know, I was going to this events. And like, I started doing modeling because I didn't believe I could do anything else. I chose modeling. I'll tell you that interesting manifestation story happened to me with modeling. Hey, so let me so let me ask you something real quick. Um, so hey, is my is my video breaking up a little bit? No, you're a little fuzzy, but you're good. It's fine. It's okay. Okay. Um, I might, I was going to fix mine to, um, my setting real quick. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to, uh, just fix my setting real fast. Hold on. Okay. That should be, and I, I, we're I, live. Hey, we're, we're so live. <laughs> um, um, so listen, man. So, um, uh, you have a have uh, so you basically were in another country jumped on a plane with $200 uh in your pocket didn't know where you were going to be didn't know what you're going to do didn't know where you were going to live um shit didn't know anybody didn't know how to speak english no. and 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 literally you know that i mean you, and you and i talked about like how cool that is you know 
I'm big on like people say, DJ, man, how, how do you do this? Cause you know, we, in business so, or in life, you meet so many people that overanalyze the crap out of everything. Oh, and it's yeah, like, okay. dude, let me tell you about this person. Hey, let me tell you about my boy Oleg, right? Like jumped on a plane and said, you know what? There's gotta be more to life than this. And I gotta, I gotta just go see, right? Yeah, and you know, and you gotta explore like Richard Branson, one of the best entrepreneurs. He was, she's like, screw it, let's do it. That's the book, you know. At some point, you just say, you know what, I'm done. Like, if I know it's now or never, you you gotta make some kind of move, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so, so those people, those of you that are watching or listening to this on the podcast, like, any time that you feel a little fearful of something, think about Oleg. <laughs> <laughs> right? Think about like, what would you do if you had to jump on a plane right now with two hundred bucks in your pocket? and go to another country where you know nobody, you don't know where to live, you don't know like anything. Put yourself in that and think, God, like it could be a lot worse. Like I wanna leave my job, but I'm scared. I wanna, I wanna whatever, leave um, this situation. Well, I'll tell you how it all happened, why like I got to the point of making decisions like that. Yes. When you have nothing left to lose, you start winning, you know what I mean? And this is the point that happened. My mom kicked me out of the house at 16. So Canary Islands is like LA, it's warm, it's dry. So like I was living in the mountains, like camping. I just went live in the, in the cave and, and by the beach, you know? And those are the best moments of my life, talking about nobody's telling you anything. Like you are on your own feet. You're like, shit, I'm doing shit on my own. Like, even if it's like, okay, like it's a rough time, but at least I'm doing it myself. You know, I'm moving yeah. forward. I'm looking for a job myself. My mom, my mom, my daddy didn't find me this job. You know what I mean? I, I found my own job. I'm making my own money. I was working the club. Oh, it's crazy. I went from living like basically on the beach to meeting this uh, famous singer in Spain. I didn't even tell you that. Like at 17, I all of a sudden I meet the singer and she just liked me a lot. And we started hanging out for two days and paparazzi caught us. And then I'm all over like the TMZ of Spain. And I'm like, I was like, holy shit, like this happened like this. Right. And the thing is, I was playing with those ideas and then start happening. Right. But I was open to because sometimes when you lose everything, there's nothing holding you back. No routine, no group of friends with a certain mentality that they have. And you kind of fall into that. So you kind of open to like new possibilities. Anyways, all this is like crazy story, but then I, at least it got me like, you know, once you've been through like, I've got nothing left to lose, then like, well, you only move, can move forward from there. Yeah. So when this opportunity came in, like, you know, hey, you know, you'd like to go to LA, why not? You know, is anything holding me back here? No. What's the worst that can, you know, I thought to myself like, I mean, I already lived basically on like camping. It's basically like, you, you know, you don't have a apartment, right? So I said, well, the worst that can happen, I mean, LA is a warm place and, and like being a Spanish citizen, I can always tell the, the embassy is like, hey, I'm a Spanish citizen, you owe me a ticket to get back home. Like by law, it's, they kind of have to, right? So I said, they can always like deport me for free, you know what I mean? Like, what can I like, if I don't find a way out, like, so you, you think about what's the worst that can happen and then realize it's not that bad. So why am I so afraid? You know, the worst that can happen, it's not really that bad. So like, yeah, let's go. So then I got here and things start working out because, you know, you kind of like just let go, let God, you know, and that's how things start working out. So, um, so how did you, so let's talk about, so fast forward, um, you know, um, that is a, that's a great point though. That's a great takeaway for people. It's like, you know, um, if you, you know, if you don't go for something, right? Like you kind of said at your age, Hey, if I don't just jump on this freaking plane, and just go for this. Nothing's going to change. Like I'm going to keep. I, I, one thing I'm guaranteed. I'm going to keep getting what I'm. What's happening here? And I want to yeah. see what's. I want to see what's on the other side of this, right? And so um, you jump on a plane, come here. Um, you know now, obviously you're like, like Columbus, like Columbus like discovering Columbus. America. <laughs> that guy just totally when half of the ship died. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of like uh, taking a risk. So so you here we are today. Yeah, so you got into manifesting, right? And oh, how um, I got into that, I'll tell you. Huh? Yeah. And oh, so I want I want you to share with people um, how you got into this. And obviously, like Abraham Hicks, who is the kind of essentially 
if you guys don't know who Abraham Hicks is, you can uh, Google I'll her. explain. <laughs> yeah, and Oleg will explain. But she is basically the one that the secret, the show, the secret, the law of attraction and all that was. The was, term came from them, yeah. Was, that it came from. So share how you got into uh, manifesting and uh, manifesting vibration. Right, we'll crazy about, things. Manifesting we'll crazy about, things. We'll talk about both those. Um, but share with us how, you know, uh, real quickly, um, lead up to how you got into this and um, some experiences that you've had and how other people like basically maybe uh, how they can start manifesting more uh, into their lives. Uh, and I, I guess just start there. Yeah. Well, after I got tired of all this partying and I just, you know, people here have their own shit to work out. They're not going to be there for you helping you because they're busy with their work. You know, it's rarely you find people that say, hey, let me, I believe in you, let me help you out. It's so rare. There's always like something that they want or you have to benefit both parties. So I was saying like, I was just feeling so miserable because like I didn't study anything. I don't have any skills. I mean, there's even this modeling, like, I mean, I don't know anybody. So what I said, I mean, make a decision that's so important like a bad decision is better than no decision you know like just just make some kind of decision and that will clarify things for you if you make a decision and it doesn't turn out well well it gives you clarity of oh i know what's not working i have a better idea what could be working based on this so that's a so you know i would sleep till 12 o'clock right and then party and then i said you know what if i don't know what to do i'm gonna do what i know how to do and what is it that I know? Wake up at 6 a.m. and go to Rainian Canyon. Seems like totally unrelated, but it's a statement. I'm ready for a change. When you pick up a book and read something like Think and Grow Rich, a motivational book, Abraham Hicks, um, asking it is given their favorite, their best book. So pick up the book, not like don't ever ask how many pages. Oh, how many pages? When I hear people say, well, how many pages is there? Well, you wish there were more pages once you get into the book, like seriously. Mm -hmm. So when I pick up the book now, what I do is I'm not picking up this book to make something happen. This book will not make it happen. I'm picking up this book as a statement. I'm ready for something bigger. I'm ready for more. So I'm like taking the time to read the book. It's a statement to the universe. I am open for more greatness for myself. So that's the, that's the intention behind it. Now, uh, the details, something will hit you and inspire you, but don't get ahead of yourself thinking, yeah, I'll pick up the book, read it, and then what? Well, just pick up the book and relax and let it just transform you. So, and my problem was I never read a book in my life when I moved here. I was 19, never read a book in my life. Not because of, it's just the way they teach you. They force you think so you're not interested and they turn you off. So then you associate education with hard work. And it's like, gosh, I don't want to do it. It sucks. Like it, like it's like forcing you play piano and then you hated it when you loved it at the beginning. Oh, imagine your first sexual experience was like rape or something, right? You now you're traumatized for life. So basically when it comes to reading, that was like psychological rape. Now I'm traumatized about reading. You know, I just don't want to know about it. So then, a friend like of mine in like someone goes, hey, yeah. Uh, uh, oh yeah, we got this cool real estate school. And, you know, like, mm -hmm. get me away, I freaking Go to the you. seminar, go to the seminar, right? It's a I network hate, marketing, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, keep anything that has the word school, like, freaking, I, I'm out. Oh, no. you know, I'm, I'm, the only thing I learned in school is that school sucks. That's the only <laughs> thing I learned. <laughs> I swear I can learn nothing else. Hey, man, so, me. Me too, me too. And so. I speak better English than the teachers who try to teach me English, I swear. Both schools. And I just jumped in it. I never went to school. I just started socializing with people. I stayed away from Russians and Spanish-speaking people. And it just boom. And I've been here for 10 years, but English got good within a couple of years. Uh, get out of the comfort zone. That's the thing. I moved here. I said, no, I seen people hanging out. Like people come from Armenia, live in Glendale, Armenian, little Armenia, work out in an Armenian grocery store, go to Armenian uh, shisha hookah bars. It's like... What the fuck you come to America for? You know what I mean? Like, you still don't speak English, you know, 20 years. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> seriously. So I said, you know, I'm out of my comfort zone. Okay, it's, it's a little difficult at the beginning, but trust me, it's so worth it. So, you know, one of the things I've learned, I think who's it, Bob Proctor or Neil?
Uh oh, we uh, have a little technical glitch, but I'm sure we'll have Oleg back here in a second. So you guys, those of you that are listening DJ, to- let me know when you- when Okay, there you oh, are. Oh, there you are. Okay. There you are, man. I so was just gonna, I happened. was just gonna I was just gonna start yeah. rapping. So, but uh, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is much better. So go ahead. Good. So I was all frustrated because I thought the good looks will get you far. Uh huh. Bullshit. Good looks got you to this city, but to succeed in this city, you go to a casting. Everybody looks like you. You know, everybody's six point two, and they freaking know how to read the script, memorize the lines. They have talent in acting. They. I was like, fuck, you know, and you feel so small. You're like, I'm so freaking useless. And then you try modeling and then like, even that, there's so much competition. It's like, I can't even do like the simplest stuff. And you know, you get in your own head, you start putting pressure on yourself, right? Anyway, so I would wake up and I was just like, I was just asking, you know, asking. The first thing is ask and don't assume you're supposed to know everything. Just, you know, you weren't born knowing everything. Every entrepreneur, they weren't born in a family knowing. Most of the most successful people literally started from nothing. Yeah. And and they had drop out of college and things like that. So education is great. It's just the system sucks. You know, like I love this. I love learning now, but it's just the system that they said that, oh, you can only learn and be more through our system. And then you realize oh, how hard it is. And they convince you that this is the only way. No, it's not the only way. You literally don't need to sign up for not, any system. You're, and you're in, and you know, listen, I'm not an advocate uh, of school. Everybody that knows me knows that. I don't, I don't slam it. If someone wants to get a degree and they want to go to a four year school. Great. What I am against is, um, you know, it, like the stuff we're taught in school, right? Like the worst thing, what's the worst thing that can happen in school? You fail, right? You get an F. And you end up on the big with a big debt. Dude, I would get my ass kicked, right? Like if I got an F. And uh, yeah, and I got it. Yeah. And I, and so I got go there to pass, not to learn. We're taught we're taught that failure is a really really bad thing, and but really in life it's the in the real world it's the opposite, right? Like failure, mm -hmm. fail forward fast, right? Failure is a great thing that we can learn from and navigate and turn the dial a little bit. And, and be able to go out and have more success. So uh, anyways, that's a, that's a deep dive, man, that Absolutely. we could get on. But talk about, I want you to talk about um, how you began manifesting and once you oh, started. Okay. I was right there. Yeah, right. What, 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 you were, what you did to start manifesting things that you wanted in life and how quickly they showed up. Oh, I'll show you, I'll just tell you how quickly. So as I was, you know, making it an intention i'm ready for a change waking up early morning just as an intention a friend of mine out of nowhere sends me the secret in russian out of germany sends me the book the secret in russian and i never read a book and i hated reading just like oh you you're already doing great you make the move but if you read this you really make a change in your life i was like oh i hate reading i hate reading so they're like a month later i picked up that book and i started because i was asking like i wanted to know and i opened i was like Wow, I hated reading because I never found something interesting. They push things on you you're not interested in. It's like, this is interesting. This is like, wow, amazing how this works. And all these people kind of like back this app, like the Einstein and all the successful people. It's like, wow, coming from these people. This is interesting. So I got into that and it's like, okay, if this is for real, like this manifesting, this is like, if this is for real, what do I want to manifest? So right away I said, you know what? I want a rich girlfriend because you know? <laughs> I didn't believe I could be rich. So I was like, I want a rich girlfriend uh, and I want a dad. Like I'd like to have a mentor, like a real father, unconditional love, you know, like who's there for you. Just like a, a true family who build an empire from zero, who can teach me to do the same thing. And I was like, and made a list, like a crazy list. I just went crazy in my imagination. And, and I said, you know what? I believe in it at the moment. The knowing is, is, is I'm open to it. So I said, okay, I want a rich girlfriend, but it has to be believable. You can't just say, oh, I want this. Yeah, but if you don't expect it and believe it, you know, you you it's, you have to have that chemistry happening in your own uh, expectation, your own um, ability to, uh, yeah. So I said, you know, it has to make sense in your head. So I said, you know what? How about a rich girlfriend? Uh, why would she be rich? Well, maybe her father is rich and he likes me and I'm dating his daughter. Okay, that makes sense. I'm a nice guy. I believe it. So why would she be with you? You know, like you don't have your car. You don't have your own place. You got nothing to offer. You're not a Latin lover or anything like that. I was like, well, I'm, I'm good there. Like, 
emotionally for people. I'm really good to be as a friend. I was like, maybe she has a lot of baggage and she's like a little messed up and emotionally. I, I can be there of value. And yeah, that makes sense. It's a win-win. So it made it believable, right? Next thing you know, I meet this girl in the club for two minutes. We exchange phone numbers. And later on, like I'm totally broke living in my friend's cash. She, we decided to come on a date and said, well, come, I live here on, you know, La Cienega Fountain in LA. She shows up and says, I'm, I'm by the valet, I'm here. I was like, okay, I go down to the valet. There's no one there. I was like, what the hell are you talking about? I was like, no, I'm by the valet. I walk outside. And there's a 612 Scaglietti Ferrari. And I was like, nah, I forgot about what I wished for, right? So it's like this first day, this girl shows up in the Ferrari, right? And they're like, can't be. So I walk around and it is her. It's like, oh, hey, how are you? How are you doing? It's like, okay, you know, I'm just going with it. Like, cause my mind is now open because of reading the secret. So then we go on the first date, you know, go on the second date, she shows up in the Corvette. Third date, she shows up in a Cadillac. It's like, okay, you know, I'm just going with it. Like, in the, yeah. So we start seeing each other. And she says, well, I live in Palm Springs. That's where my family is. And I'd like to come visit and meet my family and all that. So it's like, gorgeous gorgeous girl so i drive with her to palm springs and we arrive at her estate like there's like big gates and there's a lot of houses and i say like which is your house and she's like no this is it it and i was like okay and it's like beautiful houses but inside there are garages for 115 cars rolls royce aston martin ferrari classic cars that her grandpa used to collect so that then 25 over two plane museum private plane private helicopter and I was like, fuck, you know, like, and then I was like, holy shit, I created you. I remember where I was standing, walking my neighbor's dog, where I start thinking and visualizing all this, like, rich girlfriend. And God, did she head back. <laughs> you know, you know, I manifested everything, you know what I mean? To the fucking point. And I told her, like, and she's like, what are you talking about? Like the secret, you know? The, so, the, like, so the next time, so the next time you manifested, you just, you, you wish for all the same shit. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. Except like, be careful what you pray for. You're going to get it. Right. <laughs> so I said, so I said, you know, like I created you. Like, uh, what are you talking about? I was like, yeah, the secret is like, oh, the movie is like, there's a movie. I didn't know there was a movie. I read the book. Like, yeah, there's a movie. And she showed me the one. I was like, oh my God, this is it. This is crazy. And it's like, yeah, I was excited too, but then you'll get over it. It's like, don't you get it? This like, and I realized words don't teach. That's because you read the book doesn't mean it makes the same impact on you. Um, I realized that if you don't ask the question, the answer will be annoying. No wonder the school sucks because they teach you things you never asked for. You were never curious about and they're pushing that shit in your face. And I was like, okay, that's why I get the secret and they don't get, some people don't get it because they never really asked, like honestly, deeply asked, okay, what does it take to be successful? And I was like, freaking asking what does it take send me the freaking rule book i'll play by it but just what are the rules and you get me the secrets like fuck and that manifested then at the same time i manifested my dad who's still like the closest family he's a cuban raised in new york so he how, came so how yeah. do, how for people that are watching and listening how can they manifest what what are say one or two things or three things that you could give them hey if you if you want to manifest the things that you have in your, in like, that you want in your life. Um, number one, do this. Number two, do this. Number three, do this. What would those, what would those it's, three? Things yeah. Be? Well, it's not about doing, it's about being, you know, Absolutely. a lot of people are yeah. doing and they stuck in like a hamster in a the wheel. They're doing this and doing that and doing this and doing that end up in a great pile of doo-doo because of all this doing this and being nothing. Their expectation sucks. They have low expectations. So you have to do the emotional work. You have to, that's yeah, the I biggest key. It's right like, here. why I attracted all this? Because I had the expectation. But for example, take for example, money. Oh, that's loaded with negative expectation. Yeah, nobody makes money doing this. What, what I really like to do doesn't pay. What pays I really hate to do. Like just to expect making money from what you love to do, that's huge. You have to do a lot of, you know, writing and just cleansing your own limiting beliefs. Yeah. To allow yourself to expect to make money what you love to do. Some people think then it's not okay. It's like you're not worthy. Like who would pay you for if you didn't suffer, you don't get paid. You know, like, but yeah, but the true people who truly succeed, 
they're not working. They okay, they're working 14 hours a day, but they're doing what they love to do. And if you stop paying them, they'll still be doing it. That's mm. true success right there. You know, happiness, success. But it's it's quite a hard bridge to move from making money, doing what you hate to do just for the paycheck, to start doing what you love to do. You kind of feel like you, you don't deserve it because you, you had a lot of fun. It's like, who's going to pay me for fun? Well, guess what? There's a lot of people, like the big, richest people, they're having fun. They're singing, they're cooperating, they're creating art, they, uh, they're just goofing around. Like, look how much money they're making, from, people making from Instagram, goofing around. The Kardashians are like the jackass. Like, those people are just goofing around and making a fucking fortune. You yeah. know what I mean? Doing what you love to do. But it's a hard thing. Like, I would suggest start, get this book. Asking It Is Given by Esther and Jerry Hicks. It's where Rhonda Byrne got the secret from. So I started doing my research and realized how the secret came about. She was a student of Abraham Hicks for like five, six years. And then she went on a cruise. Those people have been doing seminars since 1985. And the good thing about them, they're all about the quality of the message. They're not commercial. They never put an advertisement. They never put a billboard or anything. So Rhonda Byrne wanted to take their teachings and make it super commercial to reach out the masses, you know. So she was a student of them. She filmed all that. And then she said, well, I'm going to reach out to the masses, but I'm not going to tell people where the teachings come from because it's quite an interesting process. It's a lady who, she, after meditating for nine, eight, nine months, she allowed herself to relax and have infinite intelligence speak through her and, and bring all this knowledge how the universe works, how success works, how all this... Um, so then to a lot of people, it would sound like, oh, my God, she's channeling. Oh, my God, it's spooky stuff. And they'll reject it because of where it came from. So Rhonda Byrne says, I'm not going to tell people where you these teachings, amazing, like the secret all these teachings come from. I'm just going to, you know, water it down for the public to reach the masses. And and the, the teachers uh, said, who got this uh, amazing uh, message and how it all works, they said, well, you got to get them something solid because you get them all excited. And nothing solid to fall back on to really transform their lives. So say, well, this is how I want to do it. Rhonda Byrne said, and if you don't like it, then you can either sign your rights to me and say that this is my work. Or I'm going to edit you out. And so Esther Hicks said, very easy. Edit us out. It's okay. So the first secret, Esther Hicks was in it. The rest, which main, went mainstream, doesn't have Esther Hicks. It has everybody who was following the teachings except the main teachers so the secret behind the secret was kept as a secret like how crazy is that you know and in a way run the burn was right like a lot of people are not as open-minded they're closed-minded so the secret is like a big icebreaker to get people a little bit more open-minded and i've met so many people who said you know first the, the way i got into abraham hicks the law the real like law of attraction is through the secret and then I realized there's got to be more to the story. And then I ended up here. And it's like, wow, you guys are the main event, the main story, or the main teachers. So I would suggest get this book, Asking It Is Given by Esther and Jerry Hicks. And just relax. Shut off your phone. Relax and say, it's okay. And say, I don't know. And I'm open to know. I don't know everything, but I'm just open. And and trust me, that book, like I, I hated reading. I read it 20 times. <laughs> like, you know, like once it hits, you like. Yeah. yeah, and you and I talk, right? People go. Um, it's kind of a, it's, 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 um, it's almost like a, uh, it's more of a flow, right? So, so, um, people want to, um, have this, like this big thing over here, whatever is a house, a business, mm -hmm. millions of dollars success. So they want to have this, but they, they go, well, I'm grinding, I'm grinding, I'm grinding, I'm grinding. Right. And you, and you're like, and you're, and you're so like off balance and they're so like, anxious and they're so it's like no man you have to become the person that you need to become first um in and then do the things that you need to do in and then in order to have the things you need to have and so so many people oh look that i see too and you probably see this have everything backwards they want to have this instantly before so they, they can do, feel good yeah. so they can Eventually. feel good before they do the things they need to do and before they become the person they need to become. Yeah, absolutely. And so, right. And so it's actually in reality, it's actually the reverse. It's like you have to become the person you need to be, do the things you need to do, and then you have the things you need to have. And then, then it, all that comes naturally. All that, like all that success comes naturally. Um, once you do like, once you ask yourself like, you know, okay, once you get all that, like the, the reason you want anything is you believe that will make you happy. 
That's the only reason you want it. But if somebody just gives it to you, you win the lottery or whatever, you didn't go through the growth process. What you really want is to go through the growth process that you become the success. You know, like Elon Musk, for example, right? That guy it has become success. It's not about the things he accumulated. It's he, it, he is walking around being success. I bet you anything. I mean, this guy, uh, PayPal, you know, has nothing to do with cars. Then he went to Tesla, you know, totally different industry. Rocket ships, totally different industry. Uh, uh, space, Solar City, right? Four different in industries, and he's successful at all four of them. I bet you anything, if that guy decides to do acting, he's going to be successful at acting too. And it's, you know what I mean? Like, it's the essence he carries with himself that is successful. You know, one second, I'm going to plug my laptop because I'm running out of battery. So we're just going to improvise. I'm going to just plug this thing. Yeah. Hey, so why, so while you're moving, um, you know, those, those of you that are listening to this, you know, man, th these are some great uh, tips, some great nuggets because um, it's, it's, it's like, if you ever feel, if you're watching this and you ever feel like you try so hard to make something happen and no matter how hard you try, you're having an obstacle, you're having a challenge, you're having, you feel like you're swimming uphill. You feel like, Oh, I tried to do this and this didn't work. I tried to do this and this didn't work. Um, I talked to this person and they said this and, uh, and sometimes you feel like you're trying, you're trying, you're trying and things just aren't coming together. They're not happening for you. Uh, you're, you feel frustrated. Um, that I'm trying these things and, and, and what I want to, you know, share with you is that if you're in this situation that you're trying, trying, trying so hard and things aren't happening the way that you want them to happen, or you're not manifesting it all and all look, I'll let you mention this. Mm -hmm. Um, it all comes down to this alignment because if you're out of alignment, um, if you're, you know, for example, if you're waking up when you want, if you're not pouring into yourself, if you're not growing, if you're not evolving, if you're not getting better and, and you're frustrated and then you, you put an hour into your work or two and hours. And you work against yourself. You, you burn the candle from both ends. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because, it, and then <laughs> I, I bet everybody who tried anything feels like not only, um, things are not cooperating it feels like the world is deliberately against you and you're like what the fuck is going on like everything i try and then you start also building this expectation that good things should come hard you know you have to like grind and struggle and burn yourself to achieve like mediocre things like no if you're going with the flow you know that's when you got to be inspired you got to have that um it, this alignment has to happen and this expectation and um because if, if it feels like feels like you're struggling then sit back and rethink everything i i ask myself i've learned from uh, the book conversations with god one of the most most profound books i've ever read uh it says um oh sh i just split my mind <laughs> i just split okay you 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 take it from here for a second hey let so, me so let me ask you this oh let's, yeah oh yeah go ahead go ahead let, let me let's give the people listening and watching some real tangibles that they can they can maybe do you know i've i've talked a lot on on different shows about you know i'm big on uh morning routine setting my energy right smiling in the morning being happy doing my gratitude doing my appreciation being grateful and really setting my energy and my vibration first thing in the morning if you can give someone like tangible things that they can do to put them in the right vibration um what would you say um, in order to start having things become easier, um, be more in a flow of life instead of, instead of the frustration and, and, a, and that kind of, of, of vibration, what can people do tangibly to, to start putting themselves into that um, vibration and alignment? Yeah. Give yourself a break. That's what you can do. Get 12 hours sleep. Just get a day off. Get one day off, you know, and be open to like the biggest obstacle is like um, – uh, impatience and Impa you get in your own way when you're impatient so what i do is when when i try so hard like i moved to new york five times with all my shit and new york chewed me up and spit me out and i come back and it's like i've been to the greatest city in the world it's not the city it it has to be me if i didn't succeed it's gotta be me it's i have to work on me and what i did is like just try a book can transform your life pick up a book and say what if there is something that I don't know 
that the knowing of which would change everything. It's just what if, and now you're open to know something new. Get some good rest. Um, I would say like the, I wake up and when I feel like frustrating, I feel impatient and all that. In the morning, it's the best thing, start writing and be honest with yourself. Pour your feelings down into a paper and get clarity. So I come to a coffee shop and I just, and I'm totally honest with myself, you know, like, I'm not having fun. I'm not, ha I'm, I would write it like, I'm not having, life is supposed to be fun. I'm not having fun. And just let it flow. And then ideas of, because you already know, technically you know um, what to do. I'm writing a book that's called What to Do When You Know What to Do, but just don't feel like doing it. Everybody can relate. There's so many things like, yeah, I know that. I read that book. I know that. Theoretically, you know. But, um, we all have those things that we theoretically know what to do, but the engine, we're not lit up, we're not inspired. And if you're not inspired, you're working against yourself. You got to jumpstart the engine. It's like you have a Ferrari and you're going to freaking push it yourself. No, turn the ignition. And once you turn the ignition, you are the Ferrari. Like you can, uh, you have all the potential, but if you're not ignited, if you're not inspired, if not something like, like, oh my God, I'm so fired up about this. Like, and people are like, yeah, but that's not going to be profitable. Like, I don't care. It's it's going to lead me somewhere. Like, I know I got to do something about this or go explore that place. Um, because um, you don't know where it's going to lead you. You know, you try something, you follow your passion. And then it leads you to something. You start a business out of just like a simple idea on a napkin that you were compelled to. Let me tell you one thing. One thing I've learned, I swear by and I live by. It's from Abraham Hicks. I have it written on the wall in my room. There is not a happy ending to the journey that has not been pleasant along the way. It's just absolutely not. It's against the law of attraction. It's against the law of the universe. You cannot have it struggle, 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 then, oh, I made it. Uh, you can bullshit yourself all you want, but how do you feel about it? Like, you're not satisfied. You're not fulfilled. You made it in the eyes of everybody else, but you're not satisfied with what you're all about because your desires are different than what's mainstream. Whatever matters to you whatever matters to you it's not the same thing matter to other people like you probably expend it much more by living more life so your desires are deeper and different than what people call success you know what i mean but what what matters is whatever you do and it's satisfying and and you start a little bit satisfaction every day here and there give yourself a break do what you like and eventually it becomes every day you're doing something satisfying and then you start something new that you're passionate about you're not doing this just for the money like the whole process of working it's satisfying you know mm -hmm. it's like playing you know when you were playing as a kid football or soccer whatever you've been playing around six hours and your parents are like hey aren't you tired go have lunch it's like tired uh, i don't want to stop that's all i want to yeah. do i want to play you don't, even, you don't even think it think about being tired yeah or, or making love you know what i mean like when you're really making love with somebody you're really into you go there for two hours. You know, you're tired. No, I'm not. You know, I'm go, let's go another one. <laughs> Seriously, like it's not hard work. You into it? Yeah, yeah. We'll get we'll get some comments on that. Uh, hey, man. But yeah, I mean, that's it, right? Feeling inspired. P Sometimes people go, man, DJ, are you? You know, if I have so if I have somebody um, or experience, let's talk about this. It, it, let me not talk about me. Let me add some value to people here. Um, when people, when, when, when any of us, when we feel like, man, it's four o'clock and I'm just tired, right? That, that can come from a few places. It can come from uh, not taking care of yourself, not exercising, not taking nutritional vitamins. Um, but a lot of times the mental, right? The mental aspect and energy vampires, right? People that can be around you that you just- love them. Literally, like, like, listen, if someone has uh, someone pass away, is it great to be there for them? And yeah, that's what friends do. But if someone has drama constantly all the time and you're around that, you won't even notice. And it'll be four o'clock or three thirty. And you're like, shit, man. I you know why I left the rich girl? That's why. <laughs> yeah. You're just like exhausted. Right. And you're like, by the way, man, we should um, uh, we should give out her name and in, in, uh, Instagram name so people can uh, can uh, message. Oh, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Just gonna um, say, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> hundreds of thousands of people. That watch They're very them. private family. Yeah. Um. So, but but you know that's I, I think you know a lot of times yeah it's the mindset. But what do you I think first you know what I've learned and you can add on to this uh, Oleg is morning routine right. What am I doing first thing in the morning? Mine is exercise. 
uh, meditate, pray, appreciation, um, and and some self talk um, to get me feeling good, smiling, looking up at the sun, swimming in the pool, and feeling and just feeling this this energy, feeling like I'm so thankful to be alive another day. And it's the best and to do in the morning because you don't have the momentum of the busy day. Like it's fresher and it's easier to go to those places of gratitude in the morning. Yeah, absolutely. And then obviously, you know, taking nutrition, good nutrition, uh, eating good. Um, and, uh, and I think there, there's so much. In, and if you do those things, you guys, you'll see like throughout the day, um, those are some various things that you can do. If you wanted to do all of them, you know, I'm big on the miracle morning. Those of you know, you know, you can, you can Google search it. Hal Elrod, the miracle morning. If you take this, the, the miracle morning process and go through it and implement it into your life every single day, even on weekends, I guarantee you, you, you will have more energy. You'll feel better. You'll be happier than you've ever felt in your life. And that's really where it starts. If you're having issues in anything, it starts um, with, it, it all, it all comes down to us, right? And also the routine is very important. If you have like a stagnated routine, change the routine, do something, something different, wake up, like totally break that routine because it, it, biggest frustration is like when you think like every day just passing by repeating itself nothing is changing well then freaking change the routine and right away you're seeing things differently you're like all of a sudden you're getting inspired because you're not caught up into the same or going on automatic you know what i mean so um yeah that's that's also big you know like if you have a great routine keep the routine but if you feel like you're stagnated change physical physically change the routine you know yeah because you know and i talked to someone the other day that just started one and they said god i feel good and and now and when you feel good obviously you're going to be happier right you're going to smile more you're, when you feel good you're going to be better on your phone calls you're going to be uh more alive you're going to be more vibrant um and everything just it just it just kind of compounds on it so share with us and i want to get into your uh clothing line that's really badass here in a few minutes um so you said something man that's really cool is is being inspired you know, having something that you're passionate about that wakes you up and like that just I, I want to go today. I want to I want to um, just really have the most productive day I can. And, you know, or are you going through your day where you just feel tired and worn out? And some of you, it might be that you're doing something that doesn't serve you. It might be something that you're fighting against yourself, that you want to start that business, um, but you're scared or you want to. Um, ask this person out, but you're scared or nervous or you're right. You want to make 10,000 a month or 50,000 a month or a hundred thousand a month or a million a month, but you're, you're scared. You don't, and you don't know where to start. You don't know how. So um, first thing is research, go on, uh, check out the miracle morning. Um, also Oleg, said some things uh, you've been to Abraham Hicks, uh, Esther Hicks uh, uh, event, you know, I know, you know, you've been on stage, obviously you sent me that. I, that was, that was great. What was it that, um, that from an energy, you know, cause, cause it's not talked about enough. I don't think is energy, you know, everyone talks about mindset and manifesting and yeah, that stuff's huge, but our energy, I mean, is so, is so vital. What alignment, is yeah. alignment? What is something that you've learned in your life? Um, as far as you know, energy and how how you use it, how other people can use it to really benefit them. Well, energy comes from when you're not contradicting in yourself, like because this is your boss. Like uh, I'm pointing here, you know, this is this is my boss, right? So when you when your mind conflicts with your true nature, what are you all about? You know, it splits your energy, and then you just drain because you're working against yourself. Like that's what drains you. Um, so, I mean, it, that trumps everything. Like the, the alignment with you, but with your desire, when you, not necessarily you living your desire, but you, if you're moving towards your desire, you can feel it just the little steps. You can feel it. I mean, look at people like Keith Richards, right? I don't think the guy has the best diet. He smokes, he drinks, but he's got the passion and that he's still alive. He's just, you know, that, that energy, because a lot of musicians who are doing what they love to do, they, they're so like energized because it's in the moment, it's in the flow and comedians also, they feed from that. Like when they interact with the public, 
it goes ba back and forth and energizes them and they're like so alive and then if they don't don't perform they fall into depression you know so i think to line up your mind with what matters to you with your desire in whichever way you do it you can do it through i mean there's many methods you you can be all things to all people that's what I, one thing i learned whatever works for you it may not work for me and vice versa because not everybody is at the same level of understanding and the same level of awareness um so whatever work but like you have to pay attention to yourself you know and let me see like but the energy comes i believe the energy nutrition is, is great but i believe when you when you the energy you lose the energy when you harden yourself when you're pessimistic like the negative thinking will drain you you're just going to be sleeping and i've been there sleeping 12 14 hours a day and at some point i woke up and i said uh well i did at some point you have to wake up <laughs> just to go to the bathroom right? so i woke up and i said I'm not excited. I'm not. What do I want? I thought, what do I want physically? I have to see it. I have to know. But what if what you want has not been created yet? Who are you going to copy it from? You know, like people say, I just don't know. The biggest problem, people just don't know what they want. But you can generally go out there and say, okay, I don't know specifically what I want, but I do know generally what I want. And this is what I did. I said, I just want to wake up and be excited. I don't give a, don't give a fuck what I'm going to do. It, I don't care if it's modeling because what if it's not modeling what if it's not acting i just want to be wake up and be excited to start my day just sleeping 12 hours a day so and then i'm gonna get into i had this idea of starting a clothing brand yeah I never thought of yeah never okay, thought let's, of that. let's let's go let's get into talking about that um yeah. so so go ahead so i wake up and i say okay what are general things you want like you don't know specifically how it's gonna look but what is it you want to say okay i want to be original i want always want to be original. i don't copy anybody and i'm glad people successful like the kardashians with their bullshit and and other people doing pranks and all that like but i would hate myself every day if i would do that you know that would be hard work for me although it pays well probably i would never be successful because it's not what i'm into i said you know i want to do something meaningful something positive, something inspiring, something original, make a lot of money doing what I love to do, build a name, build a platform, doing what I love to do. And, you know, and I said, you know what, when it shows up, when the idea comes in, like in the shower, whatever, I will know. So now that I'm open to the idea, when it shows up, it's like, oh my God, that's what I was looking for. Because you open, like, yeah, go ahead. There, no, 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 I'm just saying, very important. You know, you've hit on that a few times and I picked up on that, when you're open, you know, so many times yeah. people are closed off when you're open, like, hey, I'm just going to be open to I'm just going to be open. Right. I'm going to be such open. a refreshing feeling, you know. Oh, yeah. man. It's so weird. I'm going to be open to the universe. I'm going to be open. I'm just going to be and let the universe surprise you. Let You got to leave, leave room for magic. Don't plan 100 percent of your day. Leave 20 percent for magic. Like, you know, like leave 20 minutes. Like I, I would go to work when I worked in the restaurant. I would show up an hour early. And people are like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Well, don't you sleep? I was like, yeah, but just sipping a coffee. And I said, I have nothing to do for an hour. And you contemplate, you open for magic. And then guess what? You meet somebody in a coffee shop. And because you didn't have to rush to work, now like you made a great friend. You know what I mean? Because you were open for magic, open for some inspiration. Yeah. You know? So this is, okay, so I had open. So I, I had this idea. Because you can't help but be bombarded by political events and all the shit that's happening. The Trump. First of yeah. all, I wrote, I wrote four-part bizarre art documentary in two years. I wrote that crazy art documentary. It's freaking brilliant. At some point, I'm gonna take it to the right people, and it's gonna be like, it's gonna be huge. But meanwhile, so I wrote it. I was so passionate, like, and I enjoy every moment of it. Like every, I would wake up and every idea that comes in for a design for people to reach out to something to write down like it was a pleasure just to put it all together and making it um like start building it writing it you know it has to, you have to have pleasure doing that so then i said you know what i put it aside i'll find the right people because it takes a big budget to make it and so what can i do now i said what can i start now it's just as inspiring just as creative original but what can i do now so you know what happened <laughs> I did something so big, like I, I redesigned the American flag. Okay, so like people think like, oh, this guy is nuts. Like, look at this guy, like a Russian, like is gonna design the American flag and people gonna, you know, they're gonna crucify you for that because I've touched on something that is whole.
holy to American people. Like it's like the Bible, like don't disrespect the flag or whatever. But it's totally different. Once you see what I'm doing, it's 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 so positive, people loving it. So what I did is I see all this negativity. Uh, you know, uh, Republicans against Democrat, Democrat, all this Trump and feeding all this negativity and feels like we live in the divided states of America. Yeah. And then like, you know, I'm not into Trump at all. Like I think he's, you know, any leader that is against, uh, doesn't believe in global warming, you lost me there. You know, you can be curse all you want. That's fine. You can be a rock star, disruptive, but common sense is common sense. If you're against what something that it's, we should all agree on, like global warming, you know, and he lost me anyways but i met a lot of people who voted for trump they were really nice people like kind people they just their ideology about politics is different so and they were kind and caring people and people like i couldn't believe that somebody who voted for that guy is like such a kind person you know like what the heck were you thinking like i met a guy like he's a gay mexican and he voted for trump and he loves trump i was like okay do you know he stands against everything you stand for like anyways whatever <laughs> so politically so i realized just because you voted for a different party like doesn't mean you're a bad person or better so i created this company the company is called loving american inc loving american be a loving american upgrade to love so the slogan is upgrade to love and the reason the slogan is upgrade to love and is, it, and is this the correct website i'm going to put it on the screen upgrade to love.com yeah yeah. So you guys that are listening to this podcast, go to www.upgradetolove.com. And those of you that are watching it here uh, on our show, uh, check this out because it's going to be cool. So talk, uh, talk real quick. You know, a lot of people, you know, you shared with me, um, shit that, uh, you know, I had no idea that the American flag was, was redesigned 27 times. Isn't um, that crazy? Yeah. And, so and, so, <laughs> and so because the show is, uh, uh, we're going to be wrapping up here in about five or 10 share with people really get into um what the meaning behind this is and and, and how people how people can really like be a part and get behind this movement oh yeah um so the reason is i on the fourth of july it happened on the fourth of july i saw a lot of you know i i like questioning things you know i, I don't just go on automatic you know and i see a lot of people celebrating a lot of people who like ah, i'm not too crazy about it and it's like why isn't like your independence day of independence this is big it's like um, this like African American guys like independence for whom? We were not independent until like two hundred years later. Like independence for the white male, not for women, not for blacks, not for Indians. Like forget about it. I was like, wow, you're right. Like it's not just you know you you gotta. And so I said, you know what? Let me educate myself a little bit. What is it about this American flag? And, and I found out that the American flag has been upgraded twenty seven times. And I like to use the word upgrade. There's a reason. And I said, well, who designed the 50 star flag? I know everybody knows Betsy Rose did that flag, you know? And well, who designed the 50 star flag? So I looked it up and it was a 17 year old kid who got a B minus for designing the flag, a B minus in his school project for designing the flag we have today, 50 star flag. It's like, I can't believe nobody knows that. And I asked people, Americans, hardcore Americans, politicians, and like, no, I didn't know. Isn't that crazy? It's not mainstream. And the reason he got a B minus is because he designed the 50 star when it was 48 stars. So my whole point is change is so natural. Change in America is so natural. I mean, it, all the change that happened, just the flag changed 27 times. Like no other country has done that. This is insane. And then you can do such something great for this country and be totally nobody. Like the flag we have today was designed by a 17 year old kid. That should give you fucking hope. Okay. <laughs> like, Look at the craziness. And I said, Okay, I'm not a, I'm not as crazy. So I designed 51 star American flag. Okay, so you can see it in this coffee shop I'm sitting in. Uh, in the back, there's a flag, and it's uh, 51 star in the shape of a heart, and the message is of great to love, and because that's what we need now. Because I want this, I want to start a movement of be being the United States of America. Because we feel like we live in the divided states of America. And it's like. I love, I mean, I first time I felt at home when I came to America, first time I felt at home in my life. So I, one day I said, I'll do something nice for this country. I want to be of value. How can I be of value? Do something like meaningful. So who would have thought like it, this guy, like who came with nothing, he redesigned the American flag. So I designed it. This is the flag of the people. So the message is if you're a loving American, you're welcome. You're in, you know, this flag transcends political view, transcends the Republican or Democrat or where's your birth certificate or any of that. This is the flag of the people to have to bring. Don't forget that we have so much in common and bring make it again, like as much as I can through this movement, be the United States of America. 
So, and then, hey, 10, 20 years from now, I can dream, can I? Right? Like if the flag becomes official, right? So, so you never know. For so those of you that are watching this yeah. and listening to this. First time he's sharing this. On first time he's sharing this. When you see when when you see the American flag changed one day to Oleg's view and, and the flag he's created, um, you saw it first here on DJ's dugout, man. I'm just saying you guys That's right. That's right. DJ, all the credit to DJ. The thing is I don't have the eagle, like I don't have have an official flag, you know. I create this as the flag of the people. Uh and, and it will take off because so many people that I, like I'm starting with you, DJ, for like a platform to spread the love, to spread the word, spread the awareness. I'm literally just starting it. And, and the amazing thing is it was designed on the 4th of July. How freaking powerful and beautiful that is, right? And I just want to start like a, a consciousness and intention, power of intention. Amazing book by Wayne Dyer who wrote it based on Abraham Hicks. And he explained that on the Hey How special that he wrote the book Power of Intention, his best-selling book. So the power of intention is once we start thinking in a more positive way instead of fighting with each other, like that that's how it all starts. It all starts there. The, you know, Okay, perfect example. There's this guy. I, I forgot his name. I got to look it up. He's a, a black guy who converted over 200 KKK members. He would go to the KKK camps and all these places uh, being a black man and talk to them. And eventually they... He didn't go there condemning them. I was like, oh, you fucking wrong. What, what the fuck? Like, is wrong with you? No, that's not how you change somebody's, like, inspired, you know. And, and then at some point through conversation and realizing you have so much in common, the person's like, you know what? I was wrong. Like, here's the ropes. I'm done with this shit. You know, I'm out of this KKK man. The guy has over 200 ropes from KKK members, and he's a black man, and he converted all these people. He didn't do it by condemning them. He did it by having a conversation. So my whole point was upgrade to love. Let's start having a conversation. Doesn't matter who you voted for. Um, and I even came up with this quote. And it says, this is the first time I'm sharing this quote publicly. And the Republicans are going to love me for this. And the quote goes like this. Judging someone solely by who they voted for. It's like judging somebody solely by the color of their skin. Seriously, like just because you voted for it, okay, whatever your ideology, if you are a loving American, you have love in your heart and you mean well, that's, you know, let's get together and do something nice, you know, let's come along. And um, so, yeah, the, the clothing brand is based on it. It's a beautiful LA logo. I have like the cool, like LA fashionable logo. LA stands for loving American, be a loving American. And the yeah, slogan is great to love. I saw it, man. I won't, I won't. I won't say where you stole the L from. <laughs> my, my mouth I don't want to lose it. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, man. So, but you know what? A, what a great thing. You know, I, I think especially today. You know, it, there's so much drama. There's so much negativity. And and obviously, you guys, if you don't know why there's so much negativity, why there's so much news, is because they know. When I say they, I mean the media, um, television. They know that our minds are programmed to to want to hear oh, negative. Yeah, drama brings good ratings. Dra yeah. Drama being look brings how the good Kardashians ratings. made it. Same way, drama brings good ratings. And, and if you don't know, now you know, brother. <laughs> now you know. Now you know. And so, so like um, the the thing is, like, um, yeah, who wants to hear about something positive, right? Or something something good? It's it's like when's the last time you turned the news on or CNN or something, and it wasn't. Yeah, and it was like it was anything. It was something like positive, and it leads nowhere. It leads nowhere. You just build nowhere. resentment. And it's like family fights. Yeah, and here's the crazy part: when you're when you're thinking of negative stuff, you start seeing more negative stuff show up in your life. It's like, oh my god, I watch. I watch it gets the worse it gets. Yeah. Yeah, I watch. Because you internalize that energy in you, and you're walking around like a broadcasting station, and all the signals you pick up, you pick up the worst from the people. Like, have you ever been around people, and you're just like, "Gosh, this guy brings the worst out of me." Well, it's their expectation, and you're a nice guy, and yet they will bring the worst out of you. Everybody has this and that. Like, it's what you choose to shine more. Like, what do you give more air time to? What kind of thinking you give more through the day? More air time. So by, you know, get being caught up in like, if, you know, uh, all this like memes and all this like, uh, you know, CNN and Fox News, they're both guilty of it. But, you know, they, they're not there to bring you news or inspire you. They're there to get the ratings higher, you know. And a lot of people, they're so oblivious, they don't even get that, you know. It's obvious that they all care for the rate. And they've noticed they, if they 
bring in drama and exaggerate the drama, you're all in glued to TV. I mean, have you been in a pass by a, a traffic accident? You're on the freeway and you see like something happen. Oh, 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 like everybody's looking. Of course. Yeah. Everybody likes the drama. You're looking at the accident. You know, what the hell happened? You hear some kind of noise. You run out. What happened? What happened? You're all curious about the drama, you know? So, so that's what they know. And they know that, you know, the more dramatic we exaggerate, how many times they've been full of shit. Like they do like, oh, there's a hurricane and the guy standing on his knees pretending that the water is a lot of water. They're like, no, you know, it's like this much water. And like, you just it's, just to you know make more drama out of it mm -hmm. it's, 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 oh it's, yeah uh, so those so those of you watching listening go go check out the website uh we posted on here and really get behind this movement there's um you know watch the five minute video me explaining what's the point of behind this flag there's a little surprise controversy you're gonna love it so watch the video on the website and, and what kind of memorabilia do you have on there well i literally just started this is my passion so i put um uh, the effort and all. I literally just launched it within a couple of weeks. So I have t-shirts and hats at the moment, but eventually will be jean jackets and shoes and jeans and uh, beautiful new designs coming up. Uh, so just by purchasing a t-shirt, you become part of something really positive movement and, and uh, you bring, you know, you become a loving American. You start this intention for a more loving America and then supporting my brand so I can bring in you more beautiful awesome clothing and better quality and cheaper the more i make the cheaper will become the price so your support is you know whatever loves yeah it's 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 beautiful it's positive i mean oh man absolutely well hey buddy we're gonna uh we're gonna we're gonna sign off but thank you guys for uh well thanks bro for being on the show uh today uh delivered some, drop some bombs for people to really have some aha moments and be able to i think leave and go away and those of you that are that are watching the show or it's on itunes or whatever do me a favor please share you know there's a lot of people that need positivity in this world just like we're talking about right there's so much negativity and everything on facebook and everything but this is a positive message that that maybe it's impacted you maybe you've heard just one nugget or maybe you think hey there's other people that i want to share this with that can use you know to have some fun in their day to smile to laugh a little bit um, to hear Oleg's story on how he manifested the girl of his dreams that had a had a uh, uh, five hundred bags of garbage carrying behind her. But <laughs> so so like, but there's people that that want to hear this. They want to smile. They want you know maybe add something good to their day. And so you know, please, you guys, share this video uh, on Facebook. Share it with loved ones. Share it on your wall. We appreciate the love. We appreciate the support. And if you haven't already. Go to djsdugout.tv, uh, download us, get on iTunes. All of our episodes are on iTunes uh, for replay. And again, thank you guys that are live. Uh, and thank you guys that are watching this on the replay. We love all of you. And here's to a positive future in America. Thanks, Oleg, for being on, buddy. And um, Thank you for being who you are. Hey, man. Thank you, bro. And I'll, uh, we'll talk to you guys real soon.